that about the ideas that we come up with it's important that when those ideas come into our mind that we remember them as good ideas to write them down and then I realize it's been in the back burner for some time maybe even years in the progress before even acting upon it this is one of those videos that's been sitting around for a few months that I should have done a while ago stumbled across my memory that I gotta do this one about nuclear waste and how it can write off more than half a country and we're seeing this happening in Japan and the United States as well see all those green dots and there's a lot more too there's a lot more areas where there's nuclear waste seen from medical facilities and everywhere just scattered across some of it legally dumped so wherever you see one of these green dots, you don't want to live anywhere near these sites. It doesn't even matter if there is a repository because these sites will be permanently contaminated. No matter how much decontamination efforts they do, it is already gone into the environment. So the damage is already done. Now how does the nuclear industry get away with comparing beautiful harmless healing plants to the most dangerous toxic materials known in the universe? We can get all the energy we need from the sun and real plants that make biodiesel. This is already being done in Brazil on a large scale. Now I came across a color coded map and it's going to show you in Japan that about 60% of their land area they're looking at for waste disposal. And that's just something to consider when you put one of these nuclear plants in your neighborhood or even in your country. And yes, these materials are extremely dangerous. But the priority is not to contain the most dangerous materials known to man. They don't care. They will pump this right into your water supply. Like it's okay. That this pollution is okay for the environment. What they deem to be okay is beyond magnitude of what's okay. And you can look no further. There's, there's hundreds of areas in the country this is happening. But they want to put radioactive water underneath the drinking water supply. You know, they've had good practice with fracking, so they want to just frack this radioactive material underneath water storage areas. What do we know about Florida? It's, you know, prone to flooding, low to sea level. That water can rise right back to the surface. And then what have you done? Once you have a major storm come in or a hurricane, it can just send that water right back up. It's happening all over the place. They want to put the cure on. They don't care. Now these green areas, these are areas in Japan have been labeled by the government where they feel is the safest for them to store nuclear waste. But you notice these green areas, they're all around the coast. How convenient. So nuclear waste can go into the ocean and they save on their bottom line. These interior areas, I guess look to be areas where they feel like waste could be unstable. You know, some of those could be seismic. Activity areas, population density centers, farming, agricultural. This just gives you an idea of what happens when a country has to look at itself and say, gee, we have to cover most of our coastlines with radioactive waste. These are all areas that are going to be considered for nuclear waste. The central government released what's called a scientific specialized map of the country highlighting areas where highly radioactive nuclear waste from the nation's power plants might or might not be safely buried underground for as long as 100,000 years. We just haven't done really well with it. I mean, we look at WIP, which was low level radiation and, you know, they've had a few explosions and just don't do a good deal holding this type of waste. So, you know, don't have technology to hold it in place for 50 years maybe we should make it until we have we don't just don't have the technology yet I mean you could stop making all the waste right now stop making it all right now and just work on solutions to maintain this waste to not let any drop get in the environment that should be the focus right now is preventing any future 
releases into the environment because the environment's already had enough. Totally, you know, you see the sickness of some people. You see the mutations in the animals. I mean, nowadays I, I just go out and I see mutations all the time. It's, it's become a normal thing. It's not normal. Kids that don't talk is not normal. The multicolored map is further divided into regional blocks identifying locations in each prefecture where conditions are judged to be most favorable, both in geological terms, lack of active fault lines or low risk of volcanoes, and ease of transport for bearing high level waste. It also indicated where such burial would pose scientific and logistical challenges. The general response from Hokioto to Okinawa was, not in my backyard, no crap, nobody wants this in their backyard. So let's not make any more, right? Because when it comes down to it, and I thought about this, if they want to go ahead and make a repository, I think the best idea is to have it in Washington, D.C. Right, because these are the people that are going to be making the decisions about future waste. So why not have the facility in Washington, D.C., next to the Capitol building, so when these politicians, they can go be right on top of the nuclear waste. You know, we'll shield it, we'll make it very good, we'll make it very strong for them. And they can, you know, they can go ahead and make the decision if they want to go ahead and continue funding these plants and have more nuclear waste to sit below their feet. I think it's great. Because then it will directly affect them and they're going to be making more wise decisions for all of us. Regardless of whether the government will continue its policy of putting back in operation as many reactors as possible, Japan, like most countries that embraced nuclear power five decades ago, without arrangements for long-term waste, now find that it needs to build disposal facilities sooner rather than later. However, local opposition to hosting nuclear waste may not be easily overcome. What is the map and what's the official plan for the waste? The map shows areas in the country the government has deemed either favorable or unfavorable to build underground waste storage facilities. For high level nuclear waste, there will be an operation for as long as 100,000 years. At least in theory. That's right, because we can't even get past 50 years avoiding nuclear waste. So 100,000 is just mind boggling. Right now, there's just no way. Technology is not even close to that. Waste currently stored at nuclear power plants would be transported by truck or ship to its final disposal site, where the radioactive materials would then be transferred via automated trains at least 300 meters underground. The map has four colors. Dark green indicates favorable conditions. Oh really? That's a lot of dark green right there. So just go ahead and look at your own country and just imagine all this green being in your own country. A lot of prime coastline that they don't care about. That we have to do this to a country to make nuclear waste. So the dark green indicates favorable conditions, mostly concentrated within 20 kilometers along the coast and easily accessible in terms of transportation. Light green areas are generally unfavorable, but more than 20 kilometers from the coast. Orange marks locations that would pose geological problems and silver highlights the potential existence of mineral resources. That's right, we gotta protect those mineral resources, can't get nuclear on them. Makes a lot of sense, right? You're gonna fuck up your water anyway and get your minerals, but at least it won't be nuclear waste, I guess. Close to 900 municipalities, nearly 70% of the country were judged to be favorable. Much of the coastlines of the four major islands was colored green, as was well most of the Okinawan areas that were flagged as unfavorable, include Hokioto's Shiritoko region, the tip of the Noto Peninsula in Ishiwaka Prefecture, and much of the Japan Alps region, the Tatsuri in the northern Hyogo Prefecture, and most of southern Kyushu were seen as unfavorable. What about Fukushima in Amaramari Prefecture, the site of the Rokoshori nuclear waste reprocessing plants? Both prefectures would technically fall into the favorable category using the outline criteria. In the case of Amarari, 
Locations close to the shore mean favorable transport conditions, but the government has already promised that the disposal site would not be located in Amarori because of the Rokuyoshi plant, and that Fukushima residents would not be asked to bear the burden of the final burial site. There is no great place to put it, but I mean, if Fukushima is already contaminated, well, might as well just put it in a place that's already contaminated and just face the facts. Putting in the ocean is not the responsible. Yeah, it, it may improve things a little bit locally. The grand scheme of things, continuing to put isotopes into the atmosphere, into the ocean, is killing everyone, basically. That makes you crazy to a position you put yourself in, all of a sudden. So it's out of play for political reasons. On the other hand, much of the coastal areas of the Fuki Prefecture, which has the largest concentration of nuclear power plants in the country, was deemed suitable for a disposal site. Political reaction has been cautious to skeptical. Many Fukui towns that host nuclear plants are now seeking promises from the central government that Fukui, home to 13 commercial reactors, will now also be asked to accommodate a barrel site for nuclear waste. Are authorities reviewing the use of midterm storage facilities before transferring to a final site? In 2015, the Science Council of Japan, a nation body that represents scientists and operates independently of the government, released a series of recommendations that called for storing the waste in provisional above-ground facilities for half a century. According to this plan, during the first 30 years of temporary storage, locations for a final disposal site will be identified and selected and during the last 20 years, those facilities will be built. That still requires a local government to accept a midterm facility, and none has yet. Also, such a course of action would only postpone the final site issue, putting it on the next generation to solve the predicament. Now that the map has been published, what happens next? The central government will begin to narrow the list of possible host sites. Much will depend on the strength of local opposition, and how much time, money, effort, and those who favor a particular locale becoming a final waste disposal site wish to spend on overcoming the local opposition. Without destroying the above ground environment will be a hard sell. That's right. And this waste should not be put anywhere underground, in my estimation. It should not be put anywhere underground. Because when it's in the ground, it's harder to maintain. You have to, it could collapse. It could leak into a water supply more easily. At least if you have it above ground, you can watch, you can see if it's leaking, you can monitor it with cameras. You know, we're gonna have to do some type of system where it's gonna have to be shell inside of a shell inside of a shell. Just think of those Russian dolls where they put like 20 dolls inside of a doll. Well, that's what's gonna have to be done with this nuclear waste. And they should have cameras inside of each one, you can monitor it. I don't think it's good to put this waste anywhere underground. I mean, obviously it's good for the nuclear industry because they can just put it there and feel like they don't have to watch it monitor it and just let it go wherever it wants to go. And that's just totally irresponsible. got these chicken heads in control.